Today, we know that the skies are filled with planets, stars, constellations, plenty of life, and other things. But what did the heavens hold for our ancient ancestors, and what did it mean to them? So those twinkling lights in the sky were not just pretty objects to them, but they were maps. They were stories and they were tells. The night sky was filled to the brim with endless myths holding information about our past and our future. The heavens were the realm of the gods and other mysterious celestial beings. The sky was the home of the revered ancestors and a place to live again after death. And all of those things together taught us many skills, including how to survey the land and the heavens. And with this knowledge, the ancients created sky tools, like this 3,600-year-old Nebra disc, and I'll talk about this later as well. So the symbolism depicted at the Taj Tepler sites like Gobekli Tepe indicates that some of the oldest myths in the world were probably recited there. These sites are close to 12,000 years old, and I have to quickly do a tedious thing and introduce you how myth reconstruction is done. And we're gaining new evidence for linguistic migration paths all the time. So mythology provided explanations for the creation of the world, the origins of humanity, and the nature of the universe. And the earliest forms of mythology were carried on through oral traditions and symbolism, often during gatherings and other major events and ceremonies. This ancient reconstructed myth I will soon read probably came all the way down to the Tepe sites in Turkey, which is circled in orange, from the red rectangle highlighted area of the Russian and Eurasian steppes. And that area of for our history is extremely important and a lot of people don't realize this but it'll come to light in a few years. Ancient myths can and have been reconstructed by linguistic analysis by etymologists, philologists, and linguists. They study the history of languages by looking closely at literature and oral traditions. They can figure out some of the earliest forms of myths by comparing and contrasting stories from around the world. This chart shows the various migration branches of the Proto-Indo-European language. And in these migration pathways, the ancient myths traveled as well. So who are the Proto-Indo-Europeans, also known as Pi? And why are they important? Pi is the reconstructed common ancestor of the Indo-European language family. The Indo-European migrations are hypothesized migrations of peoples shown on this map and whom spoke Proto-Indo-European and the derived Indo-European languages. So all of the highlighted countries above speak languages that were influenced by Pi. The dark blue areas where Indo-Europeans is actually a primary language. So they had a huge influence on us today all across the world. This is a simple chart showing the evolution of the ancient myth I'll read. The key concepts are highlighted in yellow, such as the first priest, the first king, the first humans, and the heavenly gods. They all remain the same, only slightly changing throughout time. And these characters are involved with creation, divine twins, a cosmic bull, and a third man. And these are all across the world. And this is the primordial story that even led to the famous twins Romulus and Remus that created Rome. The ancients might tell an engaging and entertaining story, but make no mistake, these were teaching tools which today a lot of the meanings have been forgotten. Today, archaeology generally consists of looking to the ground. And this was explicitly expressed during an interview with the director of Karahan Tepe, Nechmi Karel. So he was asked about the winter solstice alignment that Hugh and I discovered in 2021. And he responded by saying, we look in the ground and not to the sky. And that's just astounding to me because a marriage between the different disciplines such as archaeoastronomy, archaeology, and other 
uh, forms or history in general, they need to come together to actually understand the ancients thoroughly. And we're just not doing that today. You might not have been able to attend this year, but if you want to see all of the footage from Cosmic Summit 2025, including the entire lecture that you just watched a clip from, then what you can do is click the link in the description and get access to all 60 plus hours of content for $50. And if you even want to trial it out beforehand, we're giving you free access to see one of the lectures by giving us your email address. So click the link in the description and get immersed with Cosmic Summit 2025 content.